OBS makes it absurdly difficult to crossfade audio between scenes. So instead of a seamless transition from your starting soon page with the audio, you're met with an abrupt choppy stop. This can be fixed through the plugin called Advanced Scene Switcher. And it's absolutely free, you don't need a no coding, and best of all, you don't need a stream deck. If you want written instructions on what this video is, you can go to my description and follow the written format. I have screenshots included there. If you're down for video format, uh, just keep watching. I'm going to take you step by step as we create our stream scenes and then work with the advanced scenes switcher to melt crossfade the audio. Let's get into a quick demo first. This is the just chatting page. I have my microphone and the theme song playing as you can hear. Let's head over to the BRB scene where my microphone audio will seem downward and the theme song will go up. Now we're going to head over to our gameplay scene where our microphone audio goes all the way up, our theme song goes down, but our gameplay audio flows into the action. Nice, right? We'll head over to the starting soon scene where you'll hear the theme song come back up and the game audio go away. We're back to just chatting where the theme song has been lowered just a bit so you can hear me. And finally, last but not least, the ending scene, which is the same as the starting scene and the BRB scene where the mic audio goes down, game audio goes down, theme song goes up a little bit to end the scene. Step one is to install the advanced scene switcher. I have a link in the description, but you can also find it by Googling advanced scene switcher. You're going to go to obsproject.com with the OBS forums. Here's what the page will look like. If you scroll down, you could actually see all of the things this plugin can do. It's a really powerful tool. This video is just focusing on crossfading audio. From here, you'll go to download. And you'll scroll down and you'll get to pick one of these assets. Most likely you're on a Windows PC, so the Advanced Scene Switcher Windows X64 Installer EXE will be the perfect one for you. If you're not sure which one to go with, you can go to your computer's settings about my computer and sort of compare how many key terms match on the assets. Once it's installed, you can go ahead and open up OBS. Step two, you've downloaded the plugin. Where the heck is it? You're going to head to Docs and you're going to select Advanced Scene Switcher. I'm going to put it down here. And for the simplicity of the tutorial, I'm actually going to remove the Controls dock as well as the Scene Transition dock. I'm also going to bring this guy up a little bit so we have more room to show you guys the sources. Step three involves creating our gameplay scene. We're starting with this scene first because it tends to have every component of our scene in it. And once you have one scene that has everything in it, for the next scenes, we could just duplicate it and remove the items we don't want. So I highly recommend gameplay street scene first. Let's start by adding our game. For my instance, it's going to be a video capture device because I have an Elgato. And hello, Isabel. The device is the Game Catcher HD60S. We're going to hit OK, and you may notice that we can see the audio moving, but we can't actually hear it. We have a very easy solution for that. Go to the Settings button down here. For audio monitoring, we're going to put monitor and output. This way I can hear the audio as the streamer and my audience can hear it on the stream. I'm going to bring it down so that the green is pitched closer to 30 to 35. This way you can hear me clearly over the audio. For the time being, I'll mute it. That way we can continue with the tutorial. 
Next up, we need to add our audio input capture. This is going to be our mic. In my case, I have the headset microphone. Your microphone should auto appear on this. If it doesn't, close out OBS and then come back in. That generally resolves the problem. For your microphone, you're probably going to keep it at 0.0, .0 decibels. Essentially, the goal is that you're close to the red, and occasionally you can get in the red, but for the most part, you're staying in the yellow. I'll mute that for now. The last piece that we're going to add is a media source. For me, my intro song for my starting pages, my ending pages, is a single audio. So we will go ahead and write in theme song, because that's fun. Browse it. We'll have it in Twitch assets. Opening stream song. I want it to loop and then unclick the restart playback when the source becomes active. It comes down to personal preference. Essentially, by unclicking that, when I go back to the scene, it'll just pick up where it left off. If you click restart playback, then the song starts from the beginning. So all comes down to personal preference. Both options work. Once again, you can't really hear this guy. Uh, let's lower it before we change the audio settings on that. We want it lower than our game audio specifically. I personally don't stream with this song on, but um, many people do put music behind their game. So if the game audio is in the minus 35s, we'll want our background audio to be in the minus 45s, minus 50s. And if you want to be able to hear what that audio sounds like, we'll go to advanced audio properties. For the theme song, we'll put monitor and output. And you can kind of hear it. Everyone's levels are going to be different, so kind of just sort out what works for you in the meantime. For step four, you're going to add everything else that makes your gameplay scene unique to you. In my case, I added alerts and a chat box. If you don't know how to add alerts or a chat box right now, that's okay. Skip it because it's not necessary for the tutorial. I added game overlay as well as a webcam. For step five, we're going to be creating our next scene by duplicating our current scene. To do that, we'll right click on gameplay and hit duplicate. From there, we'll rename it ending soon and press OK. From here, we're going to get rid of the items that we don't use on the ending scene. However, we need to be strategic about the items that we keep. For me, I don't need the alerts the chat, the game overlay, or the webcam. So these four items are going to be deleted. I will be adding an ending overlay, which I can just drag into there. But something that we will be keeping is our game and the game audio, our microphone, and the theme song. Now that we have two scenes available, we can go ahead with step six and use the advanced scene switcher. For the tutorial, I've gone ahead and muted these audios. That won't affect your ability to use the switcher. So going to our dock, we'll hit our settings page, and this window will pop up. You'll see two tabs up here, general or macro. There's a chance you'll see a whole bunch of tabs, and that just means that the hide tabs checkmark has been unchecked. It doesn't really matter, we're only using the macro tab. Our macro will affect one scene at a time. So let's start off with the gameplay scene. We're gonna hit this plus button up here. If current scene is gameplay, then we'll go down to this button and we'll head to audio. We're going to use set source volume of our Elgato to I would say about 80%. You'll need to play around with the percentages depending on how loud your game is. Animal Crossing is on the softer side, but if you're playing a first person shooter, you might want to bring it down to 70. We'll want to fade it in over a duration of, I personally like three seconds. 
Now we have edited the audio for our switch. We still have two more audios on this tab. So we'll press the plus button again. Audio, set source volume for our theme song. I do not stream with the theme song on, so I'm gonna put it at zero. However, if you stream with background music, then perhaps you keep it around the 10 or 15% mark. I'm gonna have it fade over a duration of three seconds. Lastly, we're going to add one more. Audio, set source audio to microphone. The microphone I keep at 100%. Go ahead and fade over a duration of three seconds. One aesthetic choice that you have available to you is the option to wait for fade to complete. If you click the boxes for each one, then they will take turns. So the Elgato will go to 80%. The theme song will go to 0% and then the microphone will go to 100. I personally like keeping these unchecked. This way, all these audio adjustments happen at the same time. Now we have to set the macro for our next scene. And essentially what we'll do is we'll go to gameplay, right click, and we'll just duplicate the macro. Ending soon. We'll fill in the blanks to match our new scene. So our current scene is ending soon. Our Elgato audio, uh, our ending scene doesn't have video game sounds, so that will go to zero. Our theme song, my theme song's a little bit loud, so I'm going to put it at 30%. And then my mic volume is going to go to zero. Now that I have both of these scenes set up, we'll go over to the yellow tab right here in the general section and press start. This will now put our macros into action and let us look how it works. Now we are on to step eight, which is repeat the process for the other scenes. We're going to start with the starting soon and BRB scenes. We'll begin by right clicking ending soon and hitting duplicate. We're going to have it as starting soon and hit OK. The one thing that will change on this scene is that it needs the correct overlay. Next, we're going to duplicate this again and have it as BRB. We'll change out the overlay to BRB and get rid of the other overlay. Step nine, we're going to make macros for our starting soon and BRB scenes. We'll open up our advanced scene switcher and we'll go ahead and duplicate the ending soon scene. So we're going to write as starting soon. Perfect. So if scene, current scene is starting soon, the Elgato audio will go to 0%, the theme song will go to 30%, and the mic volume will go to 0%. Now let's duplicate it again for our BRB scene. Perfect. So if scene, current scene is BRB, It'll have the same features. The Elgato will go to 0%, theme song to 30 and audio to 0%. From there, you can just exit out, and those changes will be made. Step 10, we are going to make our just chatting scene. The way we'll do that is by duplicating our gameplay scene. Just chatting. Perfect. And here, we'll go ahead and just rearrange some things that we don't need. Perfect. Now you may be wondering what comes next. If you said an advanced scene switcher, then you are super smart. Let's get to it. We're going to go advanced scene switcher and we are going to make a macro. We're going to copy the gameplay macro. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to do just chatting. Perfect. If scene, current scene is just chatting, 
our Elgato audio is going to go to zero because on the Just Chatting page, we're not playing video games. Because I'm going to be talking over the music, I'll probably want to put it at like 7 or 10%. It all depends on how loud your audio is. Mine's pretty loud, so we'll go for a lower percentage. And then my microphone, 100%. And with that, our scene is ready. I have one last step. You're going to go to Docs, and you're going to go to Reset Docs. Resetting the UI will hide additional docs. You'll need to unhide these docs from the docs menu if you want them to be visible. Are you sure you want to reset the UI? Yes. And now we're back to OBS, how you're probably used to it. All right. And with that, that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for probably spending upwards of 10 minutes with me. I hope this solved any frustration that you experienced with this issue. I was up until 3 a.m. last night being like, there has to be a better way. And luckily I was able to find the pieces of multiple tutorials and bring it into one tutorial. So you're welcome. This is my gift to society. Don't expect me to ever be productive again. I hope you have a nice day.